Hey everyone, you're watching We Had That, and today I'm going to talk about the 1986 Wave 5 G.I. Joe Motor Viper action figure. When Wave 5 came out, I had just passed the peak of my G.I. Joe infatuation. I was still into G.I. Joe, but Wave 4 was probably the last great wave of my childhood. At the very least, the first three Dreadnoughts, Ripper, Buzzer, and Torch, were the last figures I remember really needing as a kid. Wave 5 still had some great figures, but by that time, I personally was starting to feel a little bit less excited about the new waves. Even then, I thought the Viper figure was awesome. Although Monkey Wrench wasn't quite as cool as the first three, he still fit in with the other Dreadnoughts and was a pretty cool character. Xandar was pretty rad as well. Dial Tone, Low Light, Mainframe, and Iceberg were all figures that I really liked. I even liked Lifeline quite a bit at the time. I was still playing with my toys, but the fun was just beginning to slip away. This was the wave that introduced us to the Motor Viper. The Motor Vipers were the drivers of the Cobra Stuns. According to the file card, Motor Vipers were disciplined, efficient, and highly motivated, but apparently they weren't paid any more than regular Vipers, despite the higher risk inherent in their position. The Motor Vipers were cool figures who didn't come with any accessories, but as vehicle drivers it didn't really seem like they needed any. The Motor Vipers had non-removable pistols molded onto each hip, but that was about it in terms of weaponry. Their outfits were primarily a mix of dark blue and light blue, with black and silver accents. There were some mysterious tubes molded onto their torso that went around to their backs, and I have no idea what those were supposed to be. The largest amount of silver on the outfit was the silver visor on their helmet. As you can see, the silver paint on my Motor Viper's helmet has mostly come off. Although the silver paint seems like it came off of G.I. Joe figures more quickly than other colors, most Motor Vipers that I see these days fared better than mine when it came to retaining the silver on the helmet. Maybe mine saw more action than most. Although the figures themselves had a nice design, it felt like Hasbro didn't put much of a push behind this character. There were no Motor Vipers in the 1980s Marvel G.I. Joe comic books at all, and they only appeared a little bit in the cartoon. I believe their first appearance in the cartoon was in the episode Arise, Serpenter Arise, Part 1. We see a motor viper for a second controlling a group of bats as they board what appears to be a fake school bus. Then the motor vipers drive a team of Cobra stuns that attack the G.I. Joe headquarters. As the battle continues, the motor vipers try to take on the G.I. Joes in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The Motor Vipers are back for a few seconds in Arise, Serpentor, Arise Part 2, attacking the G.I. Joes with Cobra stuns in Paris. Although no Motor Vipers appear in Part 3, they're back in Arise, Serpentor, Arise Part 4 for just a few seconds. First, driving a Cobra stun while trying to catch Sergeant Slaughter, then immediately attacked by Dr. Mindbender's monster. A little while later, we see a couple of Motor Vipers driving a Cobra stun patrolling the area. In the fifth and final part of Arise, Serpenter Arise, we see Motor Vipers driving Cobra stuns around Washington, D.C. during the final battle. Because the majority of this episode is the final battle, we see a few Motor Vipers throughout the episode. In Million Dollar Medic, there are a few Motor Vipers driving Cobra stuns while attacking the G.I. Joe headquarters. And in Glamour Girls, there are several Motor Vipers driving Cobra stuns attacking the G.I. Joes on the docks. The most time the Motor Vipers appear in any episode, and their most dialogue, is in The Spy Who Rooked Me. We first see a few in an underground Cobra base, and then we see a bunch of them manning Cobra stuns that are surprised by an attack by Joes driving a stolen Cobra stun. When Flint and Cross Country fall into a cavern below a motel, there are a group of motor vipers down there, and in what's probably their biggest role in the cartoon, two motor vipers grab Flint and Cross Country. Last, we have a couple of motor vipers with guns drawn surrounding the Joes. 
In My Brother's Keeper, a convoy of Cobra stuns manned by motor vipers chase low light and dial tone, but that's about it for that episode. In The Most Dangerous Thing in the World, a team of motor vipers under the command of Serpentor attack the Joes. Serpentor commands the motor vipers to shoot down the G.I. Joe tomahawks. Later in the episode, a team of motor vipers infiltrate the G.I. Joe headquarters, but quickly surrender to the G.I. Joes. In Sins of Our Fathers, motor vipers driving Cobra stuns attack Destro's sea monster in what's actually a pretty cool battle. In G.I. Joe the movie, the motor vipers are the first characters that we see driving through the swamp after the opening. Next, we see a huge team of them driving Cobra stuns through the Himalayas attacking the G.I. Joe team. The G.I. Joe movie is the last time we see motor vipers in the cartoon. As with most vehicle drivers, I believe the only box art to feature the motor viper is the box for the Cobra stun. There was a repaint of the Cobra stun released as part of Python Patrol, but it did not include a figure, so a Python Patrol repaint of the Viper replaced the Motor Viper on the box art. I'm curious to hear what you think of the Motor Vipers. Did you have any Motor Viper action figures when you were a kid? What did you think of them back then? What do you think of them now? Were they indispensable Cobra troops or just extra figures who didn't see much action? Tell me in the comments below. Also, please give this video a thumbs up, and if you have a chance, it would be great if you would share it on social media. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notifications bell so you'll know when I post new videos. And one last thing, if you're a fan of toys, you should know about Toylanta, the biggest toy show in the southeastern United States held annually just north of Atlanta, Georgia. Visit Toylanta.com for more information. As always, thanks for watching.